All right, you guys, let's dive into question one. The BCBA was giving little Jimmy money as a reinforcer. In doing so, the BCBA also smiles and says, nice job, Jimmy. In doing so, attention is given in addition to the money. In the scenario, it is hard to determine if the money or attention or both, combination of two, is the maintaining reinforcer. This describes which of the following? A, IV compounds, B, subject compounds, C, setting compounds, or D, measurement compounds. Uh, moving forward, B, subject compounds, you wanna think of when the subject changes over the course of a study. Think of maturation, uh, too much practice, maybe, maybe adaptation or warm up effect. Your setting compounds, um, you wanna think of problems that occur with the setting. Um, so bootleg reinforcement would be one, right? When someone's able to access reinforcement um, prior to reaching that contingency. And lastly, we have measurement compounds where you want to think of an observer drift or observer bias or reactivity. Awesome, guys. So let's look at question two. So it says here, which experimental design utilizes intermittent measures that provide the basis for determining whether the behavior change has occurred prior to the intervention? And your options are A, multiple baseline design, B, simultaneous treatment design, C, delayed multiple baseline, and D, multiple probe design. So I'm going to give everyone a chance to answer, and then um, I'll go over the questions. The answer here is D, multiple, excuse me, multiple probe design. So a multiple probe design is essentially going to be making sure that you're checking to see if the child had learned the skill during the baseline, right? Because sometimes you have warm up effects. Sometimes the child just matures. If you're doing a delayed multiple baseline design, maybe you waited two or three weeks. Maybe they accessed learning how to do the skill you want to intervene on in a previous and another place with another person. So multiple probe design is going to be your answer here. Multiple probe is when they're not connected on the graph, right? So you're just going to see the dots that are not connected. That means that they're not doing it on a, a consistent basis, but they're just sporadically probing to make sure the intervention is still necessary. So that's different than multiple baseline design, where again, you're going to be doing multiple baselines. You're going to be doing them at the same time and intervening at the same time. Um, simultaneous treatments designs, that is going to be an AKA for alternating treatment design or multi-element design. That is when you, you may or may not have a baseline and you're rapidly altering in one session or one treatment phase between two different treatments, never displaying the same one at the exact same time, but in the, within the same session to determine which is more effective. And the delayed multiple baseline is really, it's similar to the multiple probe, but the delayed multiple baseline is when you're going to be having baselines that start at different times. You can have a delayed multiple probe as well, but a delayed multiple baseline is you're going to be having the baseline start at different times. And usually you would do that because of resources and time constraints. So you can't necessarily do the full um, multiple baseline design, but you're going to delay it and you're going to start one at a time. So let's just say that a child you want to test to see whether a child can do the intervention in mom's house and dad's house and school. But let's say they're not at mom's house and dad's house at the same time. Maybe it's every other week. Then you're going to start the baselines at different times. So that is an example of how you would use that in real life. And that brings us to question three. All right, you guys. Lonnie created a class-wide reinforcement program to increase the addition math scores of the class. He wanted to make sure this was effective. So he set a specific criterion for the class to reach. Average baseline scores were 69% for the class. Lonnie set the first criterion at 75% of the test questions and answered correctly for the entire class. After two weeks, the class met this criterion on three consecutive tests. So now Lonnie increases the next criterion to 80% of the test questions answered correctly for the entire class. Once they reached this goal on three consecutive tests, a new criterion was posed for the students to reach and so on. Which experimental design is Lonnie using? A, alternating treatments. B, multiple baseline. C, changing criterion. Or D, multiple probe. Amazing. Your answer here is C, changing criterion design. So you want to be mindful with your changing criterion design. You do have a baseline, which is stated here at 69% for the class. Then from there, the criterion is changing, right? And each new criterion acts like a baseline for the next. So we can quickly 
look over the other options as Jessica did a great job identifying them previously. Alternating treatments design is when you're alternating between two treatments, can be presented with or without a baseline and with baseline and final best phase where you then pick the best treatment and put it into that final phase. Uh, your multiple baseline design, you can use across subjects, treatments or settings, and you would have your different baselines going into your different interventions, which would be in a staggered stepwise fashion. And with your multiple probe, you would simply be probing just how Jessica explained to us, where they're not connected like your typical baseline where your, um, your data points would be in fact connected. All right, let's look at question four. Jerry is using a multiple treatment reversal design, ABCBC de design, in which he has encountered a problem. He cannot analyze the effects of the intervention C on its own because the intervention C is always preceded by B. This is due to sequence effects. What must Jerry do in order to properly evaluate the effects of intervention C? A, use an alternating treatment design instead. B, stop taking data and begin the reversal again with a break in sequence. C, add a few more phases to the design. A, C, A, C, A, B, C, B, or D, plan for multiple treatment interference effects, but also use a non-concurrent multiple baseline design. So the answer here is going to be C, you have to add some more phases to design. So the problem here is that he did one baseline, right? And then he, with, he, he, he implemented his treatment, then he implemented the next treatment. So he had A, and then he did B, and then he did C, and he reversed it and went back to B, then he, then he did C again, then reverse him and back to B, and he went to C again. The problem is he never returned to baseline, right? So you do want to return to baseline by adding in more phases. So the answer, is if you have A, C, A, C, then you're comparing the C to baseline, C to baseline, and then B to baseline, and then you're comparing B and C. Does that make sense? So you do want to return to baseline. That was the issue with this, is that he was not returning to baseline. Um, alternating treatment design, you could, like you could do an alternating treatment design as well, but like sometimes you have to just rely on like what the best answer is here. And since he's talking about using a multiple treatment reversal design, there is like a very easy way to fix it and stay within the, within the design. And usually when you're returning to baseline, that is going to be one of the ways in which you're going to account for sequence effects. So that those kind of keywords in that answer is what's making C a better answer. Um, you could potentially do A, but it's like that would be a more dramatic change than just adding in an extra phase, right? Because if you have already an um, experimental like if set up, right? Uh, experimental analysis set up, and now you're going to completely change it. That kind of really you're starting completely over with the study, as opposed to just adding in an extra phase. So when you're stopping data and begin the reversal design again with the break in sequence, so that doesn't make sense, right? Just to wait. Sometimes you can't just wait to intervene on behaviors. And then planning for multiple treatment interference effects, but use a non-concurrent multiple baseline design instead. Again, you don't really need to change the entire structure of your experiment here. Simply adding another phase will work. All right, you guys. So now on to question five. Janelle is conducting a multiple baseline design for three different subjects who all live far away from each other. Janelle lives in the same city as one of our subjects, so she starts baseline phase A of her study with him. And she starts the IV, which is phase B of her study. Next, she travels to Hanover, another town an hour away, to start baseline collection, phase A of the study with subject two. She then starts the IV phase, phase B with subject two. Finally, she travels to the next town, Mountain Edge, another hour away, and does the same routine, baseline for subject three, phase A, and IV for subject three, phase B. Which of the following experimental designs is she using in this scenario? Oh, I'm sorry. A, multiple baseline, B, delayed multiple baseline, C, multiple probe design, or D, non-current multiple baseline across participants design. So our answer here is our delayed multiple baseline, as it's obvious that there's a delay because she has to take the baseline after traveling that hour, right? So the delay refers to del the delay in starting the baseline collection for subjects two and three. And as we've continuously kind of explained A, B, and D, those would not apply in this scenario. I'm sorry, A, C, and D, yes.